Welcome to Soul Food Nibbles, bite-sized pieces of food for your soul. This week I had the pleasure of speaking to Melissa Amos. Melissa specialises in helping people connect with their intuition, heal their past and transform their confusion into wisdom through the Akashic Records, Holy Fire Reiki, Oracle Cards and more. Since 2008, when she attended her first Reiki class, Melissa has undertaken a truly transformative spiritual journey, embracing all the tools at her disposal to lower stress, relieve pain, and over time become the full embodiment of her truest self. While the spiritual community can at times feel inaccessible and full of untouchable, unrelatable gurus, Melissa stands out with her gentle, warm and welcoming nature. When she was a girl, her hypnotherapist grandmother would take her over the rainbow, opening her mind to new possibilities. And as an adult, Melissa has reconnected with that fundamentally open nature and now has the privilege of guiding others along their awakenings to live a life of meaning and purpose. She is the author of the best-selling book, Memoirs of a Mystic in Training. And I'm sure you will be just as pleased as I am to listen to her talk today about the process of writing that book and about the message behind it. And I hope you enjoy. Mm. Anyway, thank you, Melissa, for being here with me today. It's been so good. Um, Author of the best-selling Memoirs of a Mystic in Training. How does that feel to be a best-selling author? It feels, do you know what, like... At first, it was like, wow, there was this whirlwind. And now it just kind of feels like, yeah, like it was leading me to this somehow. So, yeah, yeah. tingles it's around my crown. crown. <laughs> it's so good. Honestly, I I watched um, just obviously I knew you were writing the book and I knew that it was coming up for you. And I was watching um, the support and the, the flood of love as you released it. It was just it was one of the most beautiful things. I've ever seen as everybody was just like wow this is so good and then just watching it it was like a miracle it just went straight to the top of like one of the biggest sections in the the best-selling charts was it women and spirituality and spirituality as well and there's three or four different categories It, it 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 that blew me away because the women and spirituality and the spiritual biographies were kind of my categories and then I and then the head categories it just started climbing up it and we got to number two in um spiritual inspiration which is where all the big ones are and I was like what what is going on and then I found it on the movers and shakers list like on the whole of Amazon and I was like what this was all within 24 hours 36 hours I think um so and you know you mentioned the love and I'm so pleased you mentioned that because that was the most you know the numbers are the numbers but Mm. the support and the the genuine like yes we want you to do this and we want to read it and you know it it actually lifted me so like I I don't even have words for it yeah it honestly I ordered it the minute it came out and I think I had it read within 24 hours of it landing. Like I couldn't put it down. Um, and it, I mean, I, as I was reading it, I, I could hear your voice. I can't wait for the audio book. That's going to be so good. Um, but I could hear your voice talking through. And I thought, you know, this has been written just purely from the heart. It is just literally no... Do you know, sometimes when you read a book and you, you can kind of tell it's been written in order to point people in a certain direction. This was the most sort of completely honest and beautifully written set of memoirs that I, I've ever had the pleasure to read. And I think, you know, that must have been so, you must have had to sort of really dive deep into memories. And that's a real brave thing, I think, to do, to have that sort of vulnerability to open your life and let people in. Um, yeah. how did that feel was there was there shifts I, I suppose there was quite a lot of healing and deep dives that you had to do there so I think I went into writing the book quite naive to what the process was going to be yeah. and I didn't realize how 
as I started to write, I didn't really have a structure or a plan, but as I started to write chapter upon chapter, things started to come up and I started to remember stuff. And I was like, oh yeah, then that happened. And as I was doing, it was almost like I was, I was um, seeing the words appear on the screen before I really gave that much thought to it. Um, and then it came out and then I'd remember something, then I'd kind of, kind of find myself stopping. Then I'd go back in and read it. Um, like the following day or the or the day after and it started to bring up more emotions and more memories and then the universe did that really clever thing that it does and started to mirror to me everything that I was writing in the book which wasn't always easy um, but I didn't write it thinking in the first instance I didn't write it thinking this is going to an end user I wrote it thinking well I just need to write and I don't really have an agenda what I know is that I want this to be real I want this to be true and I want this to land um and I want this to inspire people but I, I was writing it really firstly for me um yeah. and then when the second edit came around that's when things really got deep like really I was like really having to dig a little deeper of you know what have I missed or what have I skirted over because my brain just wants to go no don't, don't go there don't just go there today um and that's why there was quite a gap between finishing it which was November and it coming out in August yeah I think that's that's so true that sort of going back through and reading it then having to go back through and read it again and as you say there are probably parts where you you thought I'm going to have to go deeper here I'm going to have to was there any parts in particular that jump out for you that were more difficult for you to write mm -hmm. oh, I'm back um yeah the beginning of the book <laughs> I, I think that I I think when you read it, you can feel the difference in the flow from the beginning to the middle. But then that was also very true of my journey, you know, as a kid and, and growing up. And so I think the first bits were quite hard in, in a way, um, maybe because they were so long ago, maybe because they were the foundational things, you know, writing about my grandma. Um, and also this was really interesting for me. The writing, when I was bringing other people into the book, people that have really supported me, my natural thing was to be talking all about them. I want to talk all about them and how amazing they are. And then little me is just coming along for the ride. Um, and actually, when one of my friends was reading it and she was feeding back, she's like, I, really, I, need, I need to know more about you here. Um, and that was a massive healing for me, actually, and a massive realisation for me um, to bring it back into me rather than you know the power maybe I'd given them in the past yeah I think I think that's something that we tend to do isn't it we tend to sort of nearly take the spotlight off ourselves and showcase other people right and I, I don't know what that is is it just that it's a, is it a fear of being seen is it a fear of actually standing in your own power and in your own light yeah. um but yeah definitely such a such a way of really having to get into that and really healing from it and being brave enough to go actually do you know yes these people really did help me but I, I love that that actually that yes they helped you but it then was about you so that must have been really good feedback um because I know whenever sometimes you ask people to give you feedback and they just go yeah that's really good <laughs> they yeah. hand you the book back and they don't give you anything so to get yeah. really good constructive yeah help yeah. must have been really beneficial for you I, re yeah. I recommend that to get if you're right to give it to somebody that you trust and tell them like give me give me the thing and and um my friend she really you know she's in this field and she does this work and she reads yeah. a lot of books and she was very uh thorough with with and honest about where things were missing where things you know maybe she felt some that she'd just like a bit more depth and then that helped me go in and go back and kind of read it through a reader's point of view yeah well, these are my experiences and so they make sense to me like I'm like oh yeah I can fill in the gaps behind it um so yeah you know writing the book you said about the vulnerability 
there was a when the book was about to release I was like oh my god everyone's going to see everything that I know and that I do and my ideas and all of this and and it was a bit like ah. but in the in the writing of it I found this vulnerability that I didn't know I had I allowed myself to me to be laid bare mm-hmm. and and opened up which even though, though, you know, as a healer, we do this for other people. I think that it's, it's often quite hard to do for ourselves. And I actually found that it allowed me to bring a lot of my power back as I was going back and reviewing everything that had happened from the point of view of now. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. But um, I think you touched on it there, but you know, it's work we do for other people. It's sometimes so much easier. Yeah. when it's not us yeah when it's not us yeah. in the spotlight it's like you know the saying a cobbler never mends their own shoes um <laughs> so sometimes when we have to turn that round and like shine that light on ourselves it can be really difficult how did you move through that sort of fear of oh, right I've just hit publish and it's out there how did you how did you process those fears because it must have felt really quite like exhilarating but also terrifying at the same time yeah, you, so you know all the thing about the pre-launch when I was like, oh, there's coming out. Yeah, that I had the accountability. I was like, well, it needs to go and it needs to come out. And even then, if you hear me at the beginning of it, I was kind of a bit like wishy-washy about when it was coming out because I thought, oh, I thought it was yeah. coming out. But it was when I said the date and somebody asked me for something I was um, being featured in for an actual date and I was like, okay, 8th of August. And so I knew that I had this, date that it needed to come out and I couldn't back out now um so that just that helped keep me accountable but it was all of the support that I had and all of the yeah we can't wait and oh I'm really excited and I and I started the launch partners group which is about to turn into the book club and the people joining it and then more people were joining it more people were joining it and I was like okay this needs to come out and this needs to be and this isn't about me anymore This is, okay, the book is about me, but it's not about me. It's about who, what people take from it when they have it in their hands. Because at the end of the day, they're going to be reading it or listening to it in their own voice and with their own set of experiences and with their own set of beliefs. And now it's not about me. Now it's about how does that inspire them to go a step further or to see their life in a different way or to, you know, bring the healing to what they do. So it's the best advice for anything with our own healing is just make it bigger than you, make it bigger than you. And then you can bring it back to you. Yeah, that's such good advice. It really is. Um, And there was various points as I was reading through that I was going, oh, yeah, and it felt like you were speaking directly to me. So good job. You really you definitely did that. You nailed that. It landed so well. And any other people I've spoken to, quite a few of the members in my community have also bought it and are reading it. And they're just like, it's like she's speaking to my soul. And I was like, I know, I know she has this beautiful gift of being able. And I think it's because you wrote it from such a place of being totally open. This is just my life. This is what happened to me. This is what was going on. The way you articulated things was so well, so lovely, because I there was times that maybe I'd been going through something similar with some of like when you were saying about your boss and, you know, him kind of laughing at your mm-hmm. plans. Mm-hmm. I had a boss that did something very similar at one point when he laughed in my face about something. And it was like, but the, you, the way you were able to articulate how you felt and how you were moving through that and how you then nearly used that as fuel to move on. Yeah. It made such sense to me. So it's all those wee nuggets of little yeah. bits. But one of my favorite bits was the be careful what you ask for when you were like, let me know you're here. <laughs> and then all of a sudden his music started blasting. I There would have been a Debbie-shaped hole in the wall. I would have run. I would have been like, oh my God, the high fives come all by itself. There's a poltergeist. I'm out of here. I don't, I don't wet myself. So <laughs> talk me through that because that must, that must have really freaked you out. Yeah, it did freak me out. I was so naive. I was so just like, yeah, because I was so cynical. I, like, just, I don't think I believed that things like that would happen. And... I was reading this book and it was like, and you know, I want proof. I want proof, my brain, and you'll see that in the book. I want proof of everything. 
Um, you know, I, I shared a meme the other day. It's like, give me a sign and I'll do it. It's like, give me 10 more signs and I'll keep yeah, on. Well, that, that is so me. <laughs> that is so me. I do that. <laughs> so, um, you know, now, now I'm more trusting because I understand it in, in a better way. But then I was just like, right, I need proof. And I'm sitting outside in my garden, completely alone in my house. And I read a line in the book that said something like, spirit guide, if you are here, make yourself known and make it so obvious that I can't doubt that it's you. Like that was the clincher. <laughs> I sat there and I think probably carried on reading the book. And it was like, in my memory, it was seconds later. It might, I don't know. It was like very soon after upstairs in the back of my house the spare room that no one ever goes in with a stereo that no one ever uses turns on full blast and starts playing this music really loud and literally my house shook That's and amazing. literally my heart was like boom boom boom, yeah, boom. I bet. <laughs> um and I wish I'd have known what the song was now I know I know it's a pity you can't like I don't know get them no I was gonna say get them to do it again no let's not do that <laughs> get yeah, them to play the song that. again I don't know I, I think mean, now I I think now I'd feel different although I wasn't really scared I was I was shocked and my body went into fight or flight I think for yeah uh, for a moment and I was definitely shocked but I wasn't really scared it wasn't like uh, it, it, there wasn't a fear and it didn't put me off but what I did say then was thank you for letting me know and thank you for making me so obvious because if a feather would have just fallen down in front of my face in that moment I'd have dismissed it which is where I was in my headspace then I was like thank you for doing it and thank you for making it so obvious but next time make it nice and the next time was uh the light above my head where it just started flashing and as I <clears throat> acknowledged it it stopped flashing and just stayed on constant and then the next one on the a few days later uh, when the dolphins just came and I went for a walk on my own on the um, on a cruise I was in. Um, so then I learned like, to ask for something particular and not uh, make it so obvious that I know it's you. Yeah. Please don't yeah, make my heart shake. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I actually laughed out loud when I, when I read that. Be careful what you ask for, because I thought, yeah, that is so true. But I, I totally hear you. I saw that meme you shared the other day about, you know, give me a sign. And then just give me 10 more just in case, because that that was like whenever I did my my Reiki attunements many, many, many years ago, I had got like a, a felt a, a presence of someone who told me their name was Michael. And I was like, yeah, right. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. And my Capricorn self went, no, we're not having this. And um, if your name's really Michael, let, you know, give me a sign. So I got into yeah. the car as I was driving home and Michael Jackson was on the radio and I was like, that's a wee bit tenuous I'm not having that so I did the same thing I was like you know you need to make it really obvious if your name's really Michael and you're here to help me with my Reiki you know I want a billboard I need to see it right thinking yeah. nothing else of it I thought this is a lot of nonsense I'm driving home this is just my imagination because that's always what I'll say it's just my imagination um I've got better this was like yeah. 13 14 years ago yeah <laughs> And I'm driving home from Belfast back down towards Bangor. And at the time, that about halfway, there was like an old fashioned advertising billboard where you would paste like oh, yeah. the, uh, the signs up. And they were, there was a guy pasting a sign up for a psychic coming to Bangor whose first name was Michael. So the name Michael was being okay. pasted on the board. So I started to really laugh and got, you know, the, the goosebumps and the shivers. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, Ooh. but then I still went, okay. <laughs> I want one more so I you literally you literally got the sign it was literally like well hold on a minute I'm going to orchestrate this but this man is going to be doing this right when you are doing it uh it's a sign, and I still, it's a sign. The, <laughs> still like I, I think my guides must just go oh dear god they, yeah. they must just roll their eyes but I did get my third <laughs> sign later on because I try I always look for three yeah I always look for three things just to, to confirm I'm on the right path of things and I, I did get one later in that um, I was watching TV later on that night. Couldn't find anything to watch and just hit the backup button on the TV and it just came on to whatever channel had previously been on. And there was a program on about um, star children, indigo kids. And the wee boy's name was Michael. <laughs> and it was like, okay, okay. 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 I was like, oh, okay. 
Yeah, so that one really spoke to me, but also your the throat thing. Mm-hmm. So every time you went to show up, you were getting like bouts of tonsillitis, problems with your throat. And I can really identify with that feeling of you first of all thinking, oh, maybe I'm not supposed to do this and I'm getting signs as to not. Yeah. So can you talk us through kind of how you, you work through that and went actually, you know, can I can I dive into why this is happening as opposed to just going, oh, right, I mustn't I mustn't be supposed to do that because people do yeah. that all the time, I think. They yeah. get something blocks them, yeah, or something happens, and they immediately think it's a sign to not do something. Yeah. Whereas in your instance, it was a case to really dive deep into past lives and understand, yeah, that fear of speaking out. So I think yeah. that was fascinating. I think that's true for you know if we are just where we are, and we're just staying still, and we're just still doing the same thing that we do every day. Um, you know, we might get uncomfortable, but things will generally carry on being the same. It's when we start moving forward and start moving towards our, uh, towards our path, towards our purpose, towards our joy, um, towards our meaning, that I think that things begin to transpire. So if you imagine that you were on like a bungee rope and you were walking forward, like if you're, if, if you were just staying still, the bungee rope would just be slack. There'd be nothing to do. But if, as you walk forward, you'll get to a point where you can't go any further until you look back and see if there's any knots in this bungee rope. It will just stop you, right? So mm-hmm. for me now, after that experience, we'll talk about it in a second. Um, for me now, when I get to that resistance point, it's a signal to me, not that, oh, this is the furthest I can go. It's a signal for me to turn around, look back and see if knots in my in my bungee rope, in my tether, to go, oh, okay, I just need unraveling or unwinding or loosening um, or not. Maybe it's not, it's not always. Or maybe I've been going, you know, a bit far to the right and I need to move a bit, a little bit more to the left to give me more slack. Um, and it's something I realised. And again, as, as I was writing the book and I started to come across some of the things that were maybe a little more uh, difficult or... Um, you know the the thing the times that weren't quite as easy I and then I realized how they were big leaps mm-hmm. and knowing that now I'm like okay I see you when something's not easy and I see when my resistance come in because our body is listening to everything that's going on and mm-hmm. our body will give us a often very obvious clues as to what it is that we're telling ourselves that's limiting us and in that that moment, as I was teaching Reiki, um, if you've not read the book, you or if you've not heard me speak, because I speak about this quite a lot, I would get tonsillitis every time or some form of throat disturbance every time I was teaching Reiki. And after the third or fourth time, I was like, OK, what's going on? So I went into my Akashic record, which is your field of um, knowledge and of experiences. And I just went, what's going on? And I started to receive these images of me speaking up in the past where it didn't end very well. And so my body was going, hey, Melissa, this isn't safe. Because in its in its non-updated point of view, it's not safe. In its experience, it's not safe. Mm. But in reality, it is safe. But I hadn't updated the software, the hardware, to go, we're good. <laughs> And so I went in and I used Reiki and and some other tools to bring the healing back to what happened, to remind me that I'm safe in the moment. And then as I began to move on, it lessened and lessened and lessened. It still comes in sometimes. And sometimes even when I'm talking about this, my throat, I can feel it now, my my throat does something because it's going, oh, because maybe there's something else in there or there's a resonance or it's been, it's been ingrained for so long yeah yeah but it is it's it's certainly worth investigating and do you need to know about the Akashic records to do it no do you need to know about Reiki to do it no there's certainly many ways of coming and updating that but understanding that your body is trying to tell you something and just taking the time to delve in and give it time and give it space and be like hey what's up yeah, and if you get that feeling of yeah, I don't feel safe, you can you know gain evidence of whether you are or are not. It's not about ignoring yeah. it. 
it's it because it will give you good information either way I think mm, I think so yeah and I think we're, we're, we're very good at ignoring our bodies and just uh I think I think the words you use after I am are very potent because the body yeah. then just goes okay and yeah. takes that on yeah. and kind of you program yourself to be certain ways and I think people get very attached to their their stories yeah. um and sometimes then we we do hold ourselves back Particularly, I think when you are stepping into another, you're taking yeah. another step forward. As you said, you know, you're looking back, you're saying those knots in the tether, you are you have to undo them in order to step into the next bit. And sometimes it's just safer to go, oh, it's just not meant to be, you know, right. and I think so many of us do that because I think it's just a fear of success. It's a fear of being seen, a fear of being different, you know, yeah. but yeah. Um, your work with the Akashic Records, though, um, fascinates me because it's something... Um, I can't wait. I've actually booked in to, to come and have a an Akashic record session with okay. you because I just can't wait to sort of explore and see. Um, but tell us a little bit about that, because I know there's quite a lot of people maybe don't know um, really what or have a, a sort of myths around what the Akashic records are. There's so mm. many different viewpoints, so many different, so many different, you know, you can Google it and get a million different viewpoints on it. So what's your take? So six years ago, I didn't know what they were either, um, but they knew me. Um, so the Akashic Records are, are your soul's library. Yeah, they and all you you can think of it as is that everything that we've ever done, said, thought, been, um, experienced is all contained in a field. And we know that we've just been talking about how our body keeps score yeah. and our body, you know, so our body is a part of that field. Um, so everything that's ever kind of gone on in the background or in the foreground and all the bits in between is recorded in this in this field and it's influencing us all the time whether we believe in these things or not there's an influence and I can prove that to you because how you are now is probably influenced with how you were yesterday the day before and probably you can track it yeah. all back until you you know were a child um, but what I think is so fascinating about individual records because there's a collective uh field as well but I think what's so fascinating about the individual records is yes all of these things happened but were they necessarily true mm. like were they true like what happened with my throat was that I got tonsillitis when I was meant to be doing that that happened but is it true the thing that made it happen that I wasn't safe which was that was going on behind it so we can go into this field and start to look at things that happened to us and start to understand well how did that shape my beliefs how did that shape my actions how did that shape who by who I became today and from this field which contains no judgment it's not like oh you were a naughty girl yeah. just then it was just this is what this is what happened or, and this is how you took it and these are the stories that you told yourselves and this is what the actions you took and then this what led to this and this is what led to this we can go back and we can go okay does this need to be my guidebook now or can this just be a reference book and it it can change how we show up but more than that um, and I think this is quite a missing piece in the records is it contains everything and it continues to run and so everything that I'm doing now in this moment is having it arguably more of an influence on me of what happened before because it's there and it's fresh and it's you know it's the chapter yeah. previous to the one I'm about to live and so for me having the understanding that I have this field and it's recording everything all the stuff that I'm showing all the stuff that's going on in the background and all the stuff that's sitting behind that too it helped me become more congruent with what with how I'm showing up more congruent it's not just about oh what she or he thinks or you know I think it's all yeah. of the stuff behind it and actually everything that I'm doing in this moment is influencing who I'm becoming and who I'm shaping myself to be not just for tomorrow but for lifetimes ahead if I if yeah. I come back <laughs> <laughs> oh I'm sure you will because I think you have lots to still share um <laughs> speaking of lots to still share is there sequels planned do we are we can we can we have some more please we, there will be there will be. I think it's going to be a trilogy. Oh, 
that's exciting mm -hmm. have we yeah. have, you, have you dates or can we pin you down no, to dates can't pin no. me down yeah. for anything because I've not started writing <laughs> any of them yet um I am looking at merchandise and um journals as well at the moment oh, so awesome. that that should be out fairly soon um but you know the next book I've already got ideas actually while I was editing that I was like I want to start writing it and it's like no just stop I was I was about to go off and write all three before any of them came out but I was like nope this needs to come out now so it's there um and I'm just kind of waiting for the the go button to be pushed as it did with the, that, that literally was a go button this yeah. training like all right, let's go. And I, and I went and I didn't stop until I stopped. Um, yeah. yeah. I love it. I love it. So I also know you have some brilliant events coming up. I think you're doing um, Awaken in London on the 7th and 8th. And before that, you've got your Awake or sorry, Superpower um, five day event. Yeah. Tell us a wee bit about that, because I know I've taken part in your five day event before. It was brilliant. So um, maybe share what's going on and when start okay. so how people can get involved so for me the one thing that really ties everything that I've ever done and you know become together is my intuition and yeah. I understand how you know we've even touched on it uh in this call about how we can distrust it and how there's other things going on and all of this yeah. and so for me I understand that if we can really awaken that part of us and really turn it up dial it up and trust it that it can yeah. completely change how we show up in the world so I've got two events around that the first one is a, is a, my five-day free event um, it will help you understand about managing your energy body um, it will help you understand how to receive this information and how you are receiving the information and then what to do with it to help yourself and uh, maybe others if if that yeah uh, if that floats your boat um, and that starts on the 11th of September Lovely. and you can sign up. Yeah, it's completely free. You can sign up at melissa-amos.com uh, forward slash superpower because it's a superpower. This it intuition. Is. Is. Superpower it gets you to do many funky, cool things and it pushes you into areas that you might not have uh, let your brain take you to. Um yeah. And then for the first time, I'm running Awaken in London. Um, the Saturday will be a combination of keynotes, exercises and, and meditative activations um, to, again, really help you land in and trust. But this time in a, you know, in a, in a small container, we're going to be together. I am live streaming it. I've just arranged that. So, so I've had people from across the ponds that wanted to come. So I've yeah. arranged it stream to happen so that's available as well um and that is going to be just a really yummy nourishing activating event and I've only got a few places left but I am running an extra one on the Sunday uh, like a bonus day for yeah. which will be a retreat and ritual um and we're going to do some cacao and have a sound healing and, and do all of this so those are the two uh, big things I've got coming up in yeah. September, October. Amazing, amazing. I love I love everything um, that's going on for you right now. And I love watching the glow that you have at the minute. It's just amazing. The, the beautiful healing light that's just coming off you. It's so, so good. Um, one last piece of advice for anyone starting out on this sort of journey or anyone who's really distrustful or off their intuition or not sure how to hear it. What would be your best piece of advice for them? We often have um, a lot of things going on in our internal world, right? Um, but listen to it all. Listen to it all. Don't ignore it. Don't try and think, oh, I don't like, you know, we try and bat away these thoughts and these feelings and our body and all of this. <clears throat> don't bat it away because I, what I found is that as we listen to the different parts of us more, which might be the fear, which might be the resistance, which might be the doubt, which might, you know, listen to it, but don't take it as truth. Just listen to it and go, okay, I hear you. And then invite in the intuition, intuition, soul, spirit, whatever, you know, universe. I like, I prefer to go within. Um, what do I need to know now? And yeah. so as you then invite that 
just that sentence in, even if you don't think you can hear it, even if you don't think you can feel it, something will then start to talk to you that you maybe didn't have uh, coherence of before. Yeah, I love that. What do I need to know now? That's so that's so powerful because I think sometimes we ask what we need to do and then we get lots of different mm. information coming our way. So yeah, I love that. And surrender yeah. into your own highest, right. highest self and highest power. Right, the committee. I talk about the committee yeah. in the book. Do, and sometimes do, yeah. when we when we move into more spiritual realms, then our committee gets even bigger. Yeah. <laughs> and so we just and they're all talking at once. <laughs> you yeah. think you're going mad yeah yeah I think very much just uh what do I need to know now and then just maybe one at a time yeah and be careful right. what you wish for be careful right. what you ask for <laughs> thank you so much Melissa this has been amazing I could talk to you all day but I know you have a, a very busy schedule and I really appreciate you taking the time to come and chat to me today it's been great and I'm sure everybody will want to get in touch so I will drop your links um so it's melissa-amos.com Mm -hmm. And then forward slash superpower for the um, five day challenge and forward yeah. slash awaken for your event in London. Um, so awaken dash in dash London. Just to awaken keep it. dash in dash London. Um, I will drop those in the show notes and into the um, the accompanying stuff that comes with this for everyone and out into the email. So that will be great for everybody to get in touch. I'm so excited for you. Thanks. Um, thank you so much. Thank it's you. been so good. Thank it's you. I'm just going. It's been so good. Thank you.